Ranabinad Pal, the Forgotten Indian, and the Japanese Hero. Today we are going to know about Justice Ranabinad Pal, a man venerated in Japan, India and Bangladesh. Ranabinad Pal was born on January 27, 1886, at village Salampur in Kushtia district, modern-day Bangladesh. He passed the entrance examination in 1903, and FA examination in 1905, from Rajshahi College, of modern-day Bangladesh, with distinctions. In the aftermath of World War II, Tokyo trial shows why Pal was the only Allied judge, who exonerated Japanese war criminals. Not many people today remember Ranabinad Pal. To the small numbers, many more may have been added recently, by the 2016 miniseries Tokyo Trial, available on Netflix, in which, Irfan Khan plays Pal. In 2007, on a visit to India, Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe paid tribute to Pal, who died in 1967, in an address to Parliament. He then went to Kolkata to meet Pal's son. In 1966, Pal was awarded the Order of the Sacred Treasure First Class, by the Emperor of Japan, one of the country's highest honors. Other awardees include the economist Milton Friedman, Sony co founder Akio Morita, and Toyota Motor Corp. Chairman Soichiro Toyota. There is a monument dedicated to Pal at Tokyo's Yasukuni Shrine, which commemorates Japanese war heroes. Pal was a judge on the International Military Tribunal for the Far East, IMFE, which was set up by the Allied Powers, post-World War II, to try Japanese leaders for quote-unquote, war crimes. The other ten judges were from the US, Canada, Britain, France, the Netherlands, Australia, New Zealand, the Soviet Union, China, and the Philippines. Pal was the sole dissenting judge, who exonerated all the arrested suspects of all charges. The charges were categorized into classes, A, B and C. The class A charge involved crimes against peace, waging aggressive war. Classes B and C charges covered conventional war crimes, and crimes against humanity, respectively. There could hardly have been any doubt, in anyone's mind, what the judgment of the tribunal would be. The war was over, the Allies had won, and history would be written by the victors. In fact, Pal was included as a judge, after the trial proceedings had started, merely to beef up the Asian presence on the bench. But Pal refused to be the token Indian on the bench. He surprised, rather shocked, embarrassed, and angered his colleagues. Pal pointed out that the tribunal could not apply the Class A and Class C charges, crimes against peace, and crimes against humanity, with retrospective effect. There were no such crimes listed under international law, when Japan had gone to war, so Japan could hardly have broken any law. By trying the defendants under these charges, the tribunal was going against every accepted legal procedure. The indictments themselves were invalid. The very charter, known as the Tokyo Charter, that set up the tribunal, transgressed the fundamental rules of international law, said Pal. The Tokyo Charter, he argued, ought to decide merely what matters would come up for trial, before the tribunal. It should be up to the tribunal, to determine whether these acts constituted any crime, under appropriate laws. Pal's logic was simple and irrefutable, but, of course, the charter was not changed, and the tribunal went about its business exactly, as it was expected to. Pal's arguments were strong enough, to influence the French and Dutch judges, they submitted separate dissenting notes, though agreeing with the majority judgment of finding the defendants guilty. Questions of law are not decided, in an intellectual quarantine area, in which legal doctrine and the local history of the dispute alone are retained, and all else is forcibly excluded, he wrote. We cannot afford to be ignorant of the world, in which disputes arise. In his judgment, Pal questioned the very moral right of the Allies, to condemn Japanese imperialism, when large parts of humanity had been colonies of British and other Western powers, for two centuries or more. Japan was a country with no natural resources of its own, 
he pointed out, and in annexing territories in East Asia and establishing protectorates, was merely following the Western example. Pal would be in Tokyo when India gained freedom and was partitioned, his village would go to East Pakistan. All these events back home would have been on Pal's mind, as he worked in a far-off foreign land, first as the sole representative of the colonized world, and then of a newly free people. The job at the Tokyo Tribunal would have demanded much more from him, than from any of the other judges. Even though his countrymen, might not have been aware of it, in his mind, he would have been carrying the weight of the ideals, of an entire nation, liberated from its colonized past, and aspiring for a proud future. There are roads named after PAL in Tokyo, Japan. Roads, museums, and statues in Kyoto, and a research center, at the University of Japan. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and press the bell icon below. Have a nice day.